In this lesson, we'll explore the main flipper window. So we can see flipper on the screen before us. And the first thing we'll notice is that no devices have been selected. And so we'll kind of work through the controls here from left to right. What this means is that we don't have an emulator or a device connected. And as Android developers, we know that's pretty important if we're going to be doing development. So the first thing we'll want to do is start uh, an emulator. Now, fortunately, we can actually start it from right inside Flipper. So I can click on, on the No Device Selected control, and it will show me a list of emulators. And where did this list come from? I can find my list of devices by going to my user directory and listing out the .android slash avd directory. And you'll see I have eight entries here, and it's really four pairs. And for each pair, I have a .ini file and a directory. I can't really show both of them at the same time, but if I look at the first entry, it's emulator underscore API 29.avd. And if I go back to my I go back to my control, I can see that the first entry is emulator API 29. And the other three correspond to the other three emulators that um, that I've created. Now these are only available to you if you've already created them. So I've created them in Android Studio doing my a typical development, so I have them available to me. I can select the one I want to start. In this case, I'll cho choose. In this case, I'll choose Emulator API 29. I'll click on that, and that will start the emulator. It flashed and moved on to another screen. Let me bring it back, and there it is. But let's continue on with our tour of the controls. So, as I said, the first one was um, starting an emulator and selecting an emulator, and you might have multiple emulators running at once. The second item is a camera, and if I click on that, it will take a snapshot of the screen. I'll try that. And you'll notice that now I've got a screen snapshot that I can save and use for whatever it might be, uh, creating a ticket or adding to the documentation. I can also start a movie. So if I start the movie by clicking on the camera icon, I can start a movie, I can then work in the emulator, do some things, and then click on the camera again to stop the movie, and then I'll be able to save it. Continuing on to the right, we can see that we've got the flipper version number. I'm working with 0.50.0. .0. And the only point I'll make there is that this will continue to grow over time. But, but Facebook is recognizing that they're not at the 1.0 release yet, so we're still 0.50, we're not 50 or we're not 1.50. The next control is a little gear icon for settings. And this is important because you need to configure where your Android SDK is. I'm an Android developer, not an iOS developer, so that you'll notice I don't actually have an iOS environment or, for that matter, a React Native uh, environment either, but I do have my um, Android SDK configured. And I can close that. The next icon, it's a little plus sign. I'm not sure what the icon is, but if you mouse over it, um, it says doctor. And basically what this is, is a utility that checks to make sure that you've got everything installed that you need to have installed. So you'll notice for me, I'm missing an iOS component, but I have my common components and my Android components. Also, I've marked this so that it doesn't show the warning every time I start up Flipper. So if I'm not doing iOS development, I don't want to continue to see that. So I'll close it. Now, if you do have any errors in your common or Android section, you will have to fix those before you'll be able to use Flipper. Then on the far right, I've got this little icon that shows a kind of column on the left, a column on the right. And what it does is by clicking on this, it'll toggle uh, the left or right column. So I'll click on it. You'll notice the left column went away. I'll click on it again. It came back. I'll go to the other icon for the right column. Nothing seems to happen, which makes sense because right now I don't have a right-hand column. We'll see that in some of the plugins that we'll explore later that we, we do. Now let's go back up to the top level menu. We can see that we've got a flipper option. And basically that will just tell us a little bit about the version, which is just a repeat of what we saw before. And we can also set some preferences. And the preferences are the same as the settings. Um, we, can, we can also import a Flipper file or export a Flipper file. 
More on that later, but when you're using Flipper, you can actually save some of the output and um, send it to another team or another developer, and they can import it into Flipper. We'll have a whole lesson on that. You can add a support request. This looks more like a stub to me. It doesn't really have a support request form. Um, this is either for maybe us building a custom one for our own use later, or uh, possibly it's uh, the Flipper team um, sort of preparing to make uh, support requests available from inside Flipper. I'm not sure what, which one that is. Nothing really in that that we'll use right now. A view, a couple of things there. One is reload. So anytime Flipper sort of flips out, um, no pun intended, um, if something seems to be going wrong, that's sort of the Control-Alt-Delete, thinking back on my Windows days, of, of fixing the problem. It really just stops Flipper and starts it again. Um, I rarely have to do that, but every once in a while you'll need it. Another thing, toggle full screen. Uh, you can make this full screen. You can manage plugins. I'll talk more about that later. Uh, toggle developer tools. So a couple things uh, I want to emphasize at this point. Flipper is an Electron app. Electron is a framework for creating uh, desktop clients written in JavaScript. So we're, uh, if we actually modify Flipper, we're actually working with JavaScript. What I just toggled on is the developer tools, which really gives us a view into JavaScript debugging tools. So I can see a JavaScript console. I can see JavaScript network requests. I can see the JavaScript elements on the screen. Again, this is really only going to be useful if you're developing your own plugins. So let me close that. So let's stop here, and in the next lesson, we'll start to drill into each of the plugins that are available to us.